Everyone, my name is Harry Kosyanto from the Interfaith Study and Community Development Association in conjunction with Philadelphia Roundtable. Uh, joining with me, uh, charming uh, brother, just he will express himself. So tell us about what's going on down here, what you're trying to accomplish. Well, my name is uh, Joe Sertain, and I'm with the Friends of the Bethel Burial Ground Coalition. And what we're doing today is holding a libation ceremony to honor the 5,000 dead black Philadelphians who've been buried here since the 1800s. This is a rediscovered historic site for Philadelphians. It is public property, and we're here today to offer a prayer on behalf of our ancestors. So uh, how did you first start discovering this, uh, this, this historical place? Found, you know, it, this was, it, was, it was rediscovered by a gentleman over here, uh, and it was verified through an archaeological survey conducted last summer. Oh, last summer. Uh, and the, about 5,000 bodies have been verified as being at this location. And we're trying to work with the city of Philadelphia to make sure that this burial site is granted historic status and where we can memorialize and commemorate our dead ancestors. So how do you make the, uh, the situation relevant to the young people? That's all we're doing today right. is honoring the ancestors. Right. That's, this is part of what we do to make these ancestors relevant in right. modern day. Right. What will be the obstacle, the hardship that you face right now? It's just the difficulty in working with the city bureaucracy oh, okay. to get this done the right, right. way. So do you think uh, hopefully in the end you will win will, will the battle? We, we are in this for the long oh, run, okay. so we're prepared to work with this administration, the next administration, the next administration right. until it gets done. Right. Well, okay, thank you for uh, for your time, for sharing with thank us. Thank you. So hopefully we try to help you to raise the voice, you know, to spread the message. Okay. And ho uh, hopefully everything, uh, everything that you try to accomplish, your vision will be, you know, uh, thank you. Will be done in the end. Thank, thank you. you. What I'm saying is that I didn't prepare anything because I didn't have time, but even if I had time, I would not have. Because as we say in the hip-hop community, you want to be able to freestyle. In the jazz community, you just want to improvise. You want to do what the ancestors tell you to do. So here we go. Um, how would you feel if somebody pissed on your mother's grave? You might say, wow, that's outrageous. Pissing on your mother's grave? That's what's happening here. If you look at where these bodies are buried, and look at where the bathroom is, and look at where the urinals are, that's right above your mother's, your grandmother's, mm -hmm. your great grandmother's, your father's, your grandfather's, your great grandfather. As offensive and outrageous as it might sound, to use the analogy of pissing on somebody's grave. That's what we have here. And that's why black people ought to be angry. That's why I describe myself as the angriest black man in America. James Baldwin hit him on the head during the Harlem Renaissance, and he said to be black and conscious in America is to be in a constant state of rage. So we ought to be outraged. And I'm so glad that we have what I call our local John Brown in the form of Terry Buckle who did the extensive research. Let's give Terry a big round of applause. <laughs> and not only do we have our modern day John Brown, we had Shelly Jones, who was also working on amassing all this stuff. And all those 50,000 emails you get every day about black stuff, that comes from Shelly doing the research. Um, not just them, there's been a whole host of people um, that have done some great work in making sure that we got as far as we got Karen Warrington, when you have the kind of Bob Brady, has used the political muscle to kind of pull us forward. But when we look at all these people, brothers and sisters, and people like Brother said, he wouldn't say this, this is the brother I'm about to mention, but if it weren't for him putting this all together and mobilizing us and coordinating us and leading us, we wouldn't be here now. And that's Joe Sertain. Let's give Joe Sertain a big round of applause. <laughs> The truth is, I'm really giving him a shout out because he gave me door-to-door -door service. He parked me right here in the corner. So I had to give him um, a shout out for that. But having said that, let me say this in my three or four minutes. We're talking about 5,000 black men, black women, and black children. 
buried under not just a playground, but a trash dump. I'm sure you've read the history about this site and you understand that it was the Bethel burying ground and then uh, it was leased out to people, white businesses, to use the part that wasn't so much the burial site as a storage facility. And people like Sugar Refiner, Bartholomew uh, Bechtel, who was one of the businessmen who began to use this area as a storage facility, but then disrespected it, desecrated it by turning into a trash dump. And other white businesses began to pile on. Then the city basically condemned it. And after the city condemned it and took it over, in addition to all the trash, they put a garden and then a playground. And no disrespect to the people who live in this area, but you didn't always live in this area. This area has been yuppified. When I say yuppified, there were first red men and women here, first of all. That's the real claimants to this area. And then black people had it. And then the real estate value went up and other people moved in. So we're not outside agitators. We have not only legal standing here and political standing here, but cultural standing here. This is our thing for our answers. We can share it. But when you tell me your opposition to a historical site here is based on the fact that your children want to play games, I'm not feeling it. I'm just not feeling it at all. I mean, I don't want to take away a playground from a child, but if it comes down to the ancestors and respecting them and some children playing tennis, well, that's not a close comparison. But I think we can work together. And because of people like Joe Sertain and Terry and other folks who have been meeting with the city, we don't plan to come in and take over, and it's not a matter of taking over because you can't take what was already yours to begin with. But we're willing to kind of share this and work with people. But the question I pose is this, and I'll make two quick points. Where else in America, where else in Pennsylvania, where else in Philadelphia could 5,000 Jewish people be buried under a trash dump? 5,000 Italian people be buried under trash. 5,000 English people, French people, and nobody know about it, and then not be a historical site, and not have bells and whistles and some acknowledgement. We are going to make sure that there is that acknowledgement. We are going to make sure that the desecration ends and that the consecration begins. That's why I'm so pleased when Joe Sertain say we need to come together to give these people a real acknowledgement, a real libation. RIP was supposed to mean rest in peace, but here is racism and progress. That's exactly what it's here. So I'm so glad we've come together. And one quick story I want to mention is we've all seen 12 Years a Slave, and we know the story there of Solomon North. But right here, underneath our feet, is a black man, Ignatius Bay, who basically is Solomon North on steroids. I mean, right here in Philadelphia, successful businessman, gets tricked into slavery, helps build the Washington Monument, frees himself, comes.